With the Federal Reserve almost certain to raise interest rates tomorrow, not a lot of investors are thrilled about owning the real estate investment trusts because these are exactly the kind of higher yielding stocks that tend to do worse when rates rise and the bond market competition heats up. But what if you've got a real estate investment trust that's riding a real secular positive growth trend? Lately, I've spent a lot of time talking about the stay-at-home economy, how consumers can entertain themselves and order pretty much anything without ever needing to leave the comfort of their couches. That's bad news for many real estate investment trusts that own retail space. On the other hand, it might be good news for Prologis, PLD, a global industrial real estate investment trust that's focused on the logistics space. Think warehouses, distribution facilities, and fulfillment centers. The company even counts Amazon as one of its largest customers. The question is, can the strength of this theme outweigh the fact that investors tend to sell high-yielding real estate investment trusts? Prologis sports a yield of nearly 3.6% when the Fed starts tightening in earnest. Let's take a closer look with Hamid Mogadon. He's the chairman and CEO of Prologis. Find out more about how his company's doing where it's headed. Mr. Mogadon, welcome to Man of Money. Good to see you, sir. Have a seat. Thank you. How are you? All right. I think that you um, have some great presentations. And one of them, I'm just going to go right there because this seems really interesting. You say e-commerce needs three times the space of distribution of any of any other kind of commerce, and that you're really riding that wave. We are for sure. You know, uh, if you imagine what a warehouse looks like with e-commerce uh, as its primary activity, you're dealing with parcels. You ship something about this big, put it in a package about this big with packing and material. That takes up a lot more space than pallets of goods going to a store. So, so this trend has been really good for us. Now, this is structural change. It's not going away. If anything, I would think it's increasing. Well, if you believe e-commerce's penetration is going up, then it's really good for us. Now, globally, it's also going up. So you've, you're following your customers where they need you. Absolutely. Actually, this trend is even stronger globally because they never had the big box phase of retail. Right. So they're, they're skipping right over that. Right. You're talking about supply chain disruption. and There's disruption mm-hmm. around the world. Now, um, there's also something that we've learned from XPO Logistics, a terrific mm-hmm. little outfit that's been a great stock. Good we customer. Like. Are they? I was going yeah. to ask you, because mm-hmm. you talk about the last mile opportunity. They're the last mile. Uh-huh. Actually, I'd like to talk about last touch, because sure, that's please. really important, more than last mile. Last mile is really last five miles. Okay. In the old days, the last mile was you getting in your car, going into an elevator with a bag, buying stuff, putting it in your bag, right. back down into the parking lot. Last touch is now somebody doing that for you. So being close to affluent pockets of population is really, really important. And we're actually taking advantage of that in certain cities by building multi-story product in urban neighborhoods to densify the warehouse space. In urban neighborhoods? Because I know I see you up and down I-95 when I go Philadelphia to New York, but you're just actually buying, now is there enough land? So that business that you see along I-95 is really important. That serves the city, but once you get the goods into the city, you gotta get them into people's homes and you need a last touch location to be able to stage all this stuff. That product doesn't exist. You gotta create it. And the only way you can create it uh, in mass is to go multi-story, which we're doing in some cities like Seattle. Now, one of the things that that, uh, struck me, and I think this this will play right into that, is in your presentation, you talk about the idea that the banks, uh, structural change for finance, banks' assets, Bank gas is uh, concentrated in the largest institutions. It's hard to get a loan to go against you, isn't it? It is if you don't have money. Developers right. are spoiled. They're used to borrowing 110% to build right. a building. Can't do that anymore. You've got to have a lot of equity. And the banks find it less profitable to loan on construction loads, but particularly uh, for speculative development. So really, volumes of supply are way down. And that's, uh, that's in a way, important. a bigger story than demand. And we uh, mentioned the real estate investment trust. We know some of them are hurting in retail, but uh, vacancies at all-time lows for you. I've been doing this for 35 years. This is the lowest vacancy rate I've ever seen. Well, I mean, I, I've got to try to figure out how to get you. I mean, the real estate investment trust trade too much together. You're a growth stock with right. the yield that's a real estate investment trust. Is that a better characterization? Well, it, it, describing us as a real estate investment trust is to try to explain a business by its legal format or whether it's incorporated in Delaware or Maryland. It's just a legal format for our business. We're a global company. I know that's a bad word today. Uh, well, but we that's ma- all right. But we make a ton of money overseas right. in, in meeting the needs of our customers. And after all, all these customers have global needs everywhere. Who operates? Which one of our customers operates only in the U.S.? One out of the top 20. 
the U.S. Postal Office. Oh, there you go. Well, yeah. anyway, and I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot from you. This last touch is a new thing to add to my litany, okay? That's Hamid Mogadam. He's the chairman and CEO of Prologis. Look at the chart. Look at the work. Look at the dividend. It is by far best in class. Mad Money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.